of the Capitol Kids. Good afternoon and welcome to Bird Gymnasium in Washington, D.C. for today's MEAC basketball broadcast on Flow Sports featuring the Bison of Howard and the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Pierce. I'm joined by Takira Carter. Following a rare home loss last Saturday, the Bison blew out Maryland at Eastern Shore earlier this week. Now the team with the highest flying offense, the leading scoring team of the conference, Hopes to take on and play well against last year's conference champs. Now Howard has the best offense in the conference, and that's credit to the duo, R.J. Cole and C.J. Williams, who lead the Bison in scoring. On the other end, Bethune-Cookman, they began the year with three all Miac players, and they just had some bad luck. Isaiah Bailey suffered a season-ending injury in game number three. Uh, Sean Tez Davis spent some time suspended. He's back now. He's scored in double figures each of the team's last four games. And Sufi Diakati, a great post player. Uh, he's been injured the past four games. He is suited up. He is in the starting lineup today. So they're getting two of those three back. But they just had some bad luck this year. And for them, it's going to be about finding their flow with their main players having being out. And they lost their first MEAC conference game to North Carolina Central last week. So that's a rare loss for the team that's projected to finish first in the MEAC conference and who won the whole MEAC thing last season. So hopefully they'll be able to find their flow with getting two of those three players back. Yeah, Bethune-Cookman playing their fourth of five straight on the road. How about this for bad luck in the schedule? Bethune-Cookman's projected to finish first. They face the teams projected to finish second, third, and fourth, including Howard on the road in three straight games. They've been in a tough stretch. They do have a pretty tough stretch, but the thing is, when you're projected to finish first, you're going to have that teams are actually coming well, after them. them. So they're going to have to have that upper hand and know that they are the team that is being preyed on and show up to the occasion and try to pull out these ball games. We're getting the starting five for Howard. We'll get to them in just a second. Here are the five for Bethune Cookman. At point, rather, the uh, shooting guard is Houston Smith, the 6'4 wing from Columbus, Ohio. Their big post player, their most consistent performer this year has been number 10, Clotrell Pope, the junior, the only player in the MEAC averaging a double double with 11 points and 11 rebounds per game. Sufi Diakati making his first start in about three weeks. The 6'9 uh, post player from Bronx, New York, 7 points, 6 rebounds. He's played little time this year, the reigning defensive player of the year in the MEAC. Mark Gordon gets a start at guard, 6'5", number 15, the junior. Dondre Duffus plays point, the graduate player, 6'2", number 21, out of Paul Beach. And that is the starting five for the Cookman. For the home team, uh, Akuwabu starts uh, in the post, the freshman getting a look, 6'9", out of Delta, Nigeria. Charles Williams, the off-guard, a regular starter. Two years ago, he was the MEAC Rookie of the Year. 
six foot six, junior from Richmond, Virginia. At point, he's our guy, RJ Cole. He got banged up a little bit uh, against Maryland Eastern Shore. Sat down with an ankle injury, came back for 20 plus points. I think he'll be okay. Then Chad Lottie, he's told, has been described as the new guy for this Howard team by the coaching staff. He's at third score, and he is so valuable for this team as well. And he should be fine. He's averaging about 11.5 points per game in conference. Went down a little bit from his non-conference slate where he was averaging around 13.8 points per game. But that's fine. It's early on. They're only in their third game right now with the duel. Charles, C.J. Williams, and R.J. Cole stepping up and performing each and every game. Chad Lott, like you said, is kind of like that glue guy. When he has a great game for the Bison, they look in pretty good shape to win. It's a big one, Tykira. We talked about it in the women's game. If you're Howard, almost in the exact same position, you're at home. You're facing a team that's going to be at the top of the MEAC. It's a chance to make a statement in the conference of the victory today. And that's exactly what it is, a chance to make that statement and when they have to jump out on Bethune-Cookman early. They're probably seeking some revenge and trying to take it out on Howard since they dropped their first MEAC game in conference against NC Central. Bethune-Cookman 0-1 in MEAC play. The Bison are 1-1, one one, trying to go to 2-1. And, and we're underway. Howard are their home whites. The one starter we didn't mention, the sophomore, Zion Cousins, 6 points and 13 rebounds against Eastern Shore earlier this week. The ball quickly to the post. That's Chad Lott. And now out to their leading scorer, R.J. Cole. The step back three. That's his bread and butter. In and out. Rebound. Tap up a couple times. Good aggressive play from Cousins. And it's taken away by the Wildcats. They like to push. Marcus Hall, or rather, that is uh, Gordon pushing. Ball goes down. Lola Lamp is dropped in for Bethune Cook. And they get on the board first. It's Houston Smith. We have a couple offensive rebounds in the opening tip of this game on both sides of the ball, so maybe that'll be a point of emphasis for both teams is who was going to clean up on the glass and convert. Bethune-Cookman is the best offensive rebounding team, best rebounding team in the MEAC. They only get better today with Dan Cotty. Back in the starting lineup, he's missed the past four games. Good block down low for Trell Pope was waiting for him. Regained by the Bison. The shot is missed at the top of the key. Put back his law from Cousins. And Cousins should kick it. that one out right there. Just trying to force a little too early. You get that offensive rebound. It's okay for the Bisons to settle into the offense. They don't have to go right back up with it right away. Diacotti trying to draw the foul. He's called for a travel. That's what you like, and that was one of the keys in what Coach Nickelberry talked about when we spoke with him earlier this week. You're facing a team that lives off getting offensive rebounds, aggressive defensive play. You have to crash the glass, and so far, at least early on, Howard's doing that. RJ Cole gets in the paint, has a shot blocked, the second block. That one's from Diakati, making his first start in five games. To the baseline, Houston Smith already one bucket, now pulls back. Then Cookman, one in eight on the road this year. They had a very tough non-conference schedule. Almost beat Miami to start the season back in November. The kick out, the three, good. Knocked down by Mark Gordon, the junior. He's their sharpshooter from the outside, hitting 36% of his threes, averaging nine points per game. Bison are just making silly mistakes early on right now. They look a little sped up or a little rushed and their offense. They need to just calm down, play poise, start letting the game come to them. There's no reason to rush. Bison like to push the pace, but you're facing an aggressive athletic team. Sometimes against teams like that, you have to run an off offensive set, try to get maybe a couple picks in the easy bucket. Duffus to work against RJ Cole. A matchup to watch, now Smith. Switch out on top is Chad Lott. Deep backcourt for the Bison. Three really talented guards on top. Three scores blocked down low on the other end. C.J. Williams knife into the paint. Rebound tip, no good. Bison started slow offensively against Maryland Eastern Shore off to a slow start here. On the other end, the putback is off from Smith. Batted around on the Plinko chip. Something that's very obvious about this game, both teams like to play fast and push the face, but it's resulting in them playing sloppy. They're missing a lot of bunnies around the basket. They can take their time and put it back up. 
like we said, it's the battle of the board. So it seems like teams are getting those rebounds on the offensive end, but rushing to put it back up into the basket. Savior Akuavu really playing hard down low, drawing contact, and he'll go to the free throw line. Akuavu, really good free throw shooter, especially for a 6'9 post player, shooting about 87%. Yeah, he has a nice touch from the free throw line. Only a freshman. Young team, both the, the men's and women's teams for Howard are young. As Akuwafu makes the first free throw, Coach Nickel Berry has kind of made his mark as a great recruiter. He's recruited three straight MIAC Rookies of the Year. Last year, RJ Cole was the preseason MIAC Player of the Year. Akuwafu gets them both. You're right, nice touch. Nice soft touch, especially to be that tall. Savior is up in the air. Saber Akuwavu, the MIAC Rookie of the Week, November 20th. A couple early points. Ball down low, no, but a foul. That's going to go against Akuwavu. And to the free throw line is Clotrell Pope. And with all the turmoil with uh, suspension to Chantrez Davis, the injury to Diakati, and then the season-ending injury to Isaiah Bailey, Clotrell Pope has been that guy that's been the rock for this Wildcats game this year. He had, he's had some pretty impressive games. He's had a 20-point game against Johnson University. That was early on in the non-conference season. He also pulled down 20 rebounds against North Carolina Central, the game that they had uh, the Wildcats came up short in. So he's been pretty much the glue guy for this Wildcats squad. Coach Nickelberry said they're going to try to treat him like a, a quarterback in football that scrambles, where you always want to have maybe a linebacker on a fast quarterback. You always want to have somebody boxing out. Three. That three is Pan. That's Chad Lott. He only had four points earlier this week, but sparked Howard early. Well, he's a 42 three. Uh, I'm sorry, 42% three-point shooter. So if you're the Wildcats, you want to get a handout on them. But another thing about the Wildcats, they lead the MIAC in three-point defense, yeah. meaning that they hold opponents, opponents to shooting 30% from deep. So that's something that they're very good in doing. A travel on the Wildcats end, and that's something I'm sure Howard kept in mind. They're a team that likes to shoot a lot of threes, and they do live off the three-point line sometimes. Got a timeout on the floor. 7-5 early two-point lead for the Wildcats on flowhoops.com. This is the Howard Experience. Howard trailing 7-5, three from the right wing is missed, rebound tap, pulled down by the Bison. As Howard's been great on the glass, that's Akuwabu. Now here's Williams, nifty move with the right hand, to tie it up at 7 apiece. That's a nice job by Saber, getting the rebound and kicking it out. That helped clear up the lane for Williams to have that layup. That's a Chad Lott getting the bucket, five for him. Off the pick is Duffus, into the paint. Good block down low from Akuavu. He's been active so far. Now Lott, the 6'4 guard, it's stolen away. Intercepted by Gordon. Gordon on the other end. Contact, and a blocking foul is called on Lott. What do you think about that call right there, Ryan? He looked pretty set to me. It was close, outside the circle. Uh, one of those bang-bang plays. The official made the call from the backside. I think it was, it was a close one, that's for sure. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take one with them. 7-7 is the score. 15-31 left to go. You're watching Miak Basketball on Pro Sports. The Eastern Shore team, Howard beat by about 30. It's coming to town. Against Bethune Cookman today, the Wildcats and the Bison of Bethune Cookman tied 7-7 apiece. One of the questions we had was, will this Howard team be able to keep the Wildcats off the glass? And so far, they've done a good job of that. So far, they've done a, a good job of matching the Wildcats on the board. It seems like both teams are just rebounding at will. Like, it is a fight on the inside for those rebounds. It's a battle of fitness and finesse versus brute strength. The Bison are the top scoring team of the conference. Bethune Cookman such a balanced squad, really tough down low. They rebound well, they block shots well. 
And so far we're even seven apiece. Howard two for 15 to start. Bethune Cookman two for seven. The Bison have 12 rebounds, nine offensively. And the shot is missed. And the Bison are there. Five offensive rebounds for Akuwafu. RJ Cole to the corner. Out of bounds, last and it's turned over. Wow, gets position. Bison. Actually, we'll stay here with the, the Bison. Akuwafu. Little soft sky hook. And it's pulled down by the Wildcats. That's nice patience right there by the freshman in Akuwafu. Backing his defender down, although the shot didn't fall, that was a very nice, patient move to the basket. Gordon calls for the double dribble. That's turnover number three on Bethune Cookman. Not something they do often. They're two for seven. The Bison are two for 16. Both teams trying to get it going offensively. Now, Ryan, do you think it's a little harder to get it going offensively right now? Their students are on break right now at school, so they kind of have to create their own energy. It's not much of a crowd to, you know, hype them up. We have a few people here, but it's nothing like having a good old student section to cheer your Bison on at home. It's a fair point. Bison had a couple home games in the conference with the student section uh, still coming back from winter break. They, they begin classes on Monday. As a foul is called. We saw this earlier this week, though, Takira, where the Bison struggled against Maryland Eastern Shore at the beginning. They still led, though. Their defense kept them in it. And then they just went on a roll through the final 75% of that game. I think they have that type of team that they can just turn it up, snap of a finger. And that's very good to have if you're trying to go deep into the tournament and have a great conference season. Jalen Jones is in number 23 for the Bison. Turnover as they were looking for Cameron Lewis, the senior down low. With only a couple seniors on this team. Solid defense by Zion Cousins, and it's turned over by Bethune Cookman. Zion Cousins, a sophomore from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He's really improved throughout the, the season. Coach Nickelberry says. He's the third best post player in the league. He has that much confidence in that sophomore forward. Well, he leads the team in rebounding with 7.9 a game. He has a total of 126 on the season. Might have a little bit more uh, since today's contest. And he also leads his squad in offensive rebounding. So it's pretty fair to say that he might be one of the top post in this league. Team's got a lot of confidence in the sophomore. Leon Red, number five, is called for the foul. That's his first three on the Cookman. Ball high left side. Cole getting a shot up. His second. That one's a bit short. Tapped. And they're going to stay here with the Bison as coach Ryan Ritter, Ritter such a great career as a head coach for Bethune Cookman. He's not happy about that call. He's getting his team fired up because he felt like the ball should have went the Wildcats way. Only in his second year, but when 18-14 in year one, as a foul is called, and R.J. Cole goes to the free throw line. When you're a scorer, that's the way to get yourself asserted into the game. You start out at the free throw line, and once you see the ball go through the hoop, you start feeling it a little bit and feeling nice. A way to attack the basket by R.J. Cole so he can try to get his first points at the stripe. Cole leads the Miak in points and assists. Cans the first free throw, 84% from the foul line. He had offers from bigger schools than, than Howard size-wise, including Georgetown here locally. He's a three-star recruit, but he chose Howard because he says he felt wanted. He wanted to be part of that Bison team, the pride this school has, and one of the best mid-major players in the country. Named to the Lou Henson Award mid-season watch list. Rimming out the second free throw. Bison on top, 8-7. Duffus drives to the corner. Open look, top of the key. Giacotti passes up on it, and from the wing, it's nailed by Gordon. Don't you love that? You pass a good shot to get a great shot. Nice shot right there by Gordon. Giacotti knows who the shooter is. That's Mark Gordon. Cole on the other end. Splits the defenders. Now Jones. Jump shot from Foster. Kyle Foster, the sophomore, just checking in a little bit long. And now Dufus, or Duffus rather on the other end. 
Bounce pass. Tipped by Foster. Stolen by the Bison. The senior Lewis comes away with it. Cole stepped back from 14. Got fouled and drilled the bucket. He said and one. Count that. Finding himself with another trip to the free throw line where we said before he shoots around 84%. It's a great job by Cole right there to assert himself in the position to get that and one. That's Cole's shot. He's got that step back down to Pat. He hit it from really anywhere on the floor. He's got one more free throw coming. He went one for two in his last trip. Even at 10 apiece, about seven minutes in, both teams playing an aggressive first half so far. A little bit sloppy to start, but it seems like both squads are finding their stride. Here's a step back three, and that's short from Red. Offensive rebound. Put back is tipped away by Cole. Taken away by Cole. Three on two. Cole tries to keep it himself. It's knocked away. And it's off the left thigh of RJ Cole. Red is, I'm sorry, Cole is capable of making plays like that against defenders. But when it's three people there, he should just reverse, kick that one back out, set up the Bison's offense, and try to get something that way. Daikati lines up a three. A little bit short. Playing his first game in about five contests. Alley oop laid in by Andre Torre. That was a little wee-wee right there. Players from Paris, France. He put the nice kiss off the glass with that bucket. Torre was banged up at practice this week. The 6'8 wing was questionable. Showed good hops there though. I think he's okay. Bison on top by three. The senior Lewis picks up the the foul. And if only a couple seniors on this team. Coach Nickelberry was saying that if you look around the conference, a lot of teams have players that are 21, 22, sometimes 23 second chance players. Howard's not like that. They're loaded with 19 and 20 year olds. So a player like Cameron Lewis is so valuable being a senior and especially a big, strong post player. And it's always valuable to have seniors on your squad, period. Um, and he's bringing to the game, he shoots around 30% field goal percentage, 50% from three, seven for 10 from the free throw line. So Lewis is also efficient for the Bisons. Chad Lott, a couple field goals with Duffus on him. Now Jones, Foster. Off the pick, Foster's got a look. Rebound tap, and he'll stay here with the Bison. Howard continues to crash the offensive glass. They lead 13 to 11, 11.55 left to go in this first half. You're watching MEAC basketball on Flow Sports. There be the only reason that you don't save a life. Check out Howard on social media, Howard University Athletics on Facebook, HU Bison Sports on Twitter, HU Bison Sports on Instagram, and of course, hit us up with that hashtag, Bleed Blue. Ryan Pierce, Tykira Carter, 13-11, the Bison on top. Tykira, it's been a very physical game already, nine fouls, a handful of turnovers as these two teams try to fill each other out a little bit. Two teams are trying to fill each other out. Bethune-Cookman is a team that averages 15.4 turnovers a game, which is very glaring statistic. But Howard is managing to sustain their lead, keep the pace going, and attack the basket at will. And that's one thing that I like about Howard. They are very fearless and aggressive when going to the basket. And I think that's will be an emphasis on today's game. I think that's a, a really positive sign because when you're when you're Howard, you're a team that leads the conference in points, known for your finesse. You're facing a squad that's big, they're strong, they're more mature than you are in terms of age. And the Bison, despite shooting four for 21, they've controlled the glass with 17 rebounds. The ball goes down low. Lot little fadeaway jumper is long. Another offensive chance for Howard, then it's ripped away by Bethune Cookman. BCU in the front court. Duffus calls for the high ball screen. Now goes away from it. They're looking for Mark Gordon. He's got it now already a couple threes, seven points. 
bleed BCU. Looks like Dacus was on the sideline. Another turnover. That is number six for BCU. Howard one and one in conference play, trying to go two and one and five and one this year at home as the runner is missed and a foul is called. That is already number five on the Bison. Both teams have five. It's on Andre Torre. The lengthy six foot eight four from Paris, France. As Amani Collins, the senior, checks in for BCU. Zion Cousins back in for the Bison. Williams also out there as well. So Bison four for 21. Bethune Cookman three for 11. 13 11 score. From the free throw line, short. Having it for a second was Wally Parks. It'll belong to Howard. But the shot was missed by Chantrez Davis, the big post player, preseason all MIAC. He was suspended for about four games. Since he's come back, though, double figures in each game. Now here's Cole. C.J. Williams. Akuwavu. And the jumper from the wing is good. That's C.J. Williams getting on the board. Right to the sweet spot for the preseason MIAC first team selection out of Williams. Williams has two points. Ball goes down low. Yeah, both these squads got have a handful of preseason all MIAC players. Shot from the outside is dropped in. A three from Duffus. There's about one second left on the clock with that shot right there, and he only shoots 27% from three. So I don't know if that's one he felt like he had to hoist, or, but he shot it with confidence for sure. Williams to Jones. Howard on top by one. Just under 10 minutes left to go in this first half. Here's a look from C.J. Williams. He tries to answer. Rebound tapped, and this one's handled by Smith. Duffus looking to push. Back to Smith, and he's whistled for steps. Those I'm guessing are, are the most frustrating as a player when you have some space to get a little overexcited though. Just take uh, a few too many steps before you dribble. Yeah, I think he saw the basket and that was the only thing on his mind at that moment, but you have to watch your steps in those situations. You can't get too happy. Howard trying to get their first home conference win of the year. One and one in MIAC play. Adun Cookman in the middle of a five game road trip. Game number four from the free throw line. That rattles in. Dropped in by Williams, his second field goal. Coach Ryan switched there to a 2-3 zone, but the Bison didn't let that phase them, not one bit. They're just running their offense and letting it flow. Feed goes down low, up against the defender. There's Clotrell Pope getting the bucket. Averaging a double-double, the only player in the MIAC to do so. 11 points, 11 boards. Back to a one-point game. Now here's Cousins. Jones. Williams calling for the ball. Back to Akiwafu. He's got some space. Rebound cup by Collins. Now Duffus off the pick from Collins. Now Pope. And a foul is called. Trying to go for the steal was Akiwafu. Save your Akiwafu. He's been a menace on the glass already, eight rebounds, but it's two fouls. And that second stat's the most important as Cameron Lewis will check in. Bison a little bit thin up top. So whenever a post player gets in foul trouble, it's something to note. Lewis averaging just eight minutes per game already, his second appearance. Collins to the top. Duffus. This is everything. I think Cookman just feels like they're really off rhythm right now. 
trying to find that with open looks off picks and whatnot. Yeah, but that's not what Zuffis does. He's not a player who shoots a ton of threes. That one, just attack the basket, run your offense, try to get your team into the flow of the game that you're looking for. Still only a one-point game, and both these teams, good defensive teams as well. As the pass goes to the baseline, the shot is rattled in. That's a three out of the corner for Jones. Jones puts Howard up by four with that three. Nice pass from R.J. Cole, the conference leader in assists. Trying to respond as Collins. Ball batted around, and here comes Cole. Cole with some pace. The feed down low. Lewis is open. Shot altered, and they say it's goaltending. As Cameron Lewis finishes off the play to put Howard up by six. Look at the big guy running the floor. Cameron Lewis was able to put himself in that position to get the goaltending call because of the way he sprinted the floor. Timeout on the floor, 22 to 16, Howard on top by six. It's Miak basketball on Flow Sports. The new celebration. Hey, this has been a fun one so far today. The Bison projected to finish fourth in the conference between Cook and the preseason favorites. Right now the Bison on top, 22 to 16. They clean up the glass well, they play solid defense, the things we were hoping to see from them prior to the game. Yeah, and it seems like Howard is just dictating the pace of this basketball game. They're not letting Bethune-Cookman take them out of what they want to do. And that's why they hold this 22-16 lead in the first half. You see the pace pick up just a little bit. Howard on a 5-0 run. Now shooting 27% from the field. Bethune-Cookman 31%, but Howard 20 rebounds, including 11 offensively. Cousins has four, and Akuwave has five. Driving with a strong left hand, getting the bucket and the foul. That's his first score, Sean Trez Davis. And when he gets going, he's tough to stop. Preseason on Miak. Nice strong take to the basket right there. Asserting himself into this ball game. Davis, the 6'9 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, preseason all Miak, like Takira said. He's played the last four games before serving about a four-game suspension. He scored in double figures in each of those games. Such a huge addition for a Bethune-Cookman, and you talked about it at the top, that has a lot of talent, but their top three players have only played two games together this year. Yeah, you just have to look at his track record. He was second in double-doubles in the Miak last season, and he was... Also had about 277 total boards, which was fourth in the MEAC. So not only can he score, but he can also get it done on other sides of the basketball. Three dropped in from the right wing as that's put down by Mark Gordon. That is already his third three in this first half. He's the leading scorer for Bethune Cookton with 10. Cole kicks out the corner and travel is called as Williams for steps. That would have been a nice play, the give and go action in the feed from Cole in the corner. He just has to watch that first step. And that's a call that a lot of basketball players get called for in the games, that quick travel. Too quick for their own good. Akuwavu checks in. Players see that open space and they get a little overexcited. Duffus driving. Now top of the key, it's Pope. He's got range for a big man. The one-handed board from Lott. RJ Cole. With two field goals for Cole, the conference's leading score. Nice move, runner off the bank board. Showing off the top is RJ Cole. Kiss off the glass is what they call it. Bank is open on a Saturday. Cole now with four points. The kick out to the right wing and travel is called on Leon Red. Third time we've seen that where a player catches some steps today. Playing a little rushed. If you slow down, you won't get that travel called on you. As we said before, take your time. You see daylight and you go running with it, literally. Good for football. Good for the playoffs this weekend, not for basketball. Here's a kick out to the right wing. Another three from Howard. This one's short as C.J. Williams misfires. 
It's such a quick release. We were talking to Coach about how CJ needs such little space to fire. He's kind of that traditional shooting guard, 6'6", lengthy. Good stroke from the outside, quick release. Yep, he was the MEAC co-player of the week, November 19th. Leon Red getting that one to go, and we're all tied up at 24 apiece. The outside shot starting to fall from Bethune Cookman. It's been Leon Red and Mark Gordon. Feet down low. Patience from Lott. The pass, the shot is missed by Cousins. Here come the Wildcats. Trying to get their first lead since the early minutes of this one. Top of the key, three is splashed in. That's Sean Trez Davis. Timeout taken by Coach Nickelberry. A seven point run and the Bison find themselves down by three. The 30 second timeout, we'll keep it here. A quick reminder that the dance starts here, the 2019 MEAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament returns to the Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia, March 11th to 16th. And tickets are now on sale, pick up your tickets at member institution tick-off ticket offices, Ticketmaster, or by calling the MEAC office at 757-951-2055. Howard down by three, 27-24. They, I feel like, packed in the lane to prevent these easy scores down low. That's given the Wildcats some space from the outside. Yeah, if you take away one thing, then you have to do the other, which is letting it fly. And the Wildcats are shooting the ball with confidence at this point in the game. Started off slow. They were only shooting 30% to the first 13 minutes or so. They picked it up. Now leading by three is between Cookman. See how Howard responds here. Big possession out of the timeout. Shot from the right elbow is off. And Pope the rebound. He leads the conference in that category. Here's Gordon. Back to Pope. Into the defense. Hands straight up. Good pressure from Howard. Pull the rebound. Good defense from Savior right there, not to foul, even though he might have been tempted to do so. Pull the step back off the pick. That's his shot, poke the rebound. And now the Wildcats will slow it up on a 7-0 run, up 27-24 as we approach the four-minute mark in this first half. Howard's biggest lead was six. This is the biggest lead so far for the Wildcats. As a shot is laid in by Pope on the left block, he's starting to get going. Latrell Pope, 6.4 rebounds. The crowd here at Bird Gymnasium get a little bit antsy. Open look, top of the key is long. Rebound tapped, and here comes Duffus. Duffus to the wing, open, three, red, short. Rebound, Davis, and the bucket. Howard needs to slow it down on this possession and run their stuff a little bit. There's no need to rush. You still have the, you no longer have the lead. Just try to regain your momentum that they had earlier on in the first half. Bounce pass down low. Layup missed. Tap is strong. Right there was Zion Cousins, another offensive rebound. That's Cousins' first two points. He does have six rebounds, though. Big bucket there for Howard, cuts the lead to five. If you're the Bison, if you can make, keep this at a two possession, possibly make it a one possession game heading to the half, that'd be okay, I think, with Coach Nickelberry as an offensive foul is called. Looks like Latrell Pope hooked the defender and a timeout on the floor. Bison down by five, 2.54 left to go in this first half. We'll take a timeout. You're watching at MEAC Basketball on a Flow Sports. City Smokehouse, a traditional barbecue taste in an unconventional setting. We pride ourselves in smoking the best quality meats daily with an emphasis on texture, tenderness, and bursts of flavor. Located at 203 Florida Avenue Northwest. Known for our own DC style, D City Smokehouse strives to serve the best barbecue in town. Bethune Cookman Wildcats lead the Bison of Howard 31 to 26. They've started to make their outside shot. And I think now the question that 
that Howard Huddle is, how do we adjust to the shooting from Bethune Cookman? Push up on them a little further and be a little aggressive, be physical. Howard is known to be an aggressive team, and I think they could take away from those outside shots and make them go to their second, third options, putting the ball in the bat. I'm sorry, putting the floor, putting the ball on the floor and attacking the basket. And if you're Howard on the other end, run your offense. I think they've been doing best in this game when they've ran their sets. Sockle Chell Pope there laughing with the, the assistant coach. Pope off to a, a good start. Six points, four rebounds. And you can see why Bethune Cookman is known for being such a good defensive team. They're long. They have players 6'8, six, 6'9 six, that rebound the basketball very well. And I think that's also been a big difference between the beginning and now is just the rebounding of the Wildcats. Yeah, you turn rebounding around, and that's their strong suit. So that's how Bethune Cookman usually ends up winning their basketball games. RJ Cole will let it roll to the timeline as the shot clock started and the official will reset it to 30 seconds. Wildcats on top, 31 to 26. Bethune Cookman playing their fourth of five straight road games. They opened the conference with th three straight on the road. They're also getting back uh, Sufi Diakati. And they're still working in Sean Trez Davis after he missed about four games. So it's a team that's going through probably the toughest part of their season. They can come away with a victory here today. That'd be a, a big win for them. And same for Howard trying to beat the preseason pick to win the MIAC. That shot was blocked. Pope gobbles the rebound. He's got five. I thought he got fouled on that one. I beg to differ. I think he should have kicked that one out. Duffus the feed down low. It's Pope. Pope gathers the miss. And they're going to say a jump ball. It'll stay here with Bethune Cookman. Again, Zion Cousins. And we talked about it earlier. Coach Nickelberry thinks he's the third best post player in the MIAC. And he's growing into that, I think, reputation in that role, the big six foot eight wing. I mean, he has the most blocks on the team. He leads the team in rebounding. He's the most efficient on the glass on offensive rebounding. I think Coach is right to have that assumption about Cousins. Duffus to the corner. Back to Duffus straight on. Offensive rebound, Duffus. Scooping layup, it goes. That's what you can't have if you're the Bison. Yeah, they did such a great job of keeping them off the glass in the first part of this first half. And now they're, they're not doing as good of a job. They need to get back to what was working for them. Andre Torrey went for the poster and was denied at the rim. You like the aggression, just couldn't finish. He definitely was trying to put him on his highlight tape for <laughs> sure with that. Here comes Cole off the rebound. To the right wing, spot up three. It's long from Foster as the game picks up tempo. Bounce pass to the right side. Gordon, bucket is good and a foul. Mark Gordon having a great first half. He has 12. I don't like that foul by Cole. If you are going to foul him, you foul him and don't let him make the basket. And also from your best player, you don't want him picking up ticky-tack fouls in that case. Although it's only his first. They say it's a, a double whammy there. Bucket's good and then your guy RJ Cole picks up the quick foul. 87 seconds left to go in the first half. Big point in this game for the Bison as that free throw misses. You'd love to get it down to maybe two possessions going into halftime. Yeah, the tides have definitely turned in this ball game. It seemed like Howard had that control, and now the shots just aren't seeming to fall. Bison, one and one, going for their first MIAC home win. The shot is missed by Torre. Runner in the paint is no good. Rebound tapped, it'll be long to the Bison. I haven't quite mentioned it this week. Torrey, we have talked about. Um, he did stay out of a few practices with a light injury. He looks fine, though. C.J. Williams and R.J. Cole as well didn't practice a couple times this week. Both of them appear to be okay, though. Sometimes it could just trip you up, you know, practice in the ball game's a little different. If you're going a little softer in practice, you might get into this little mode where you're used to being a little sluggish and, and such. So hopefully they can pick that up going into the second half. 
Jones, the runner, is missed long. Battle for the rebound. Leads to a jump ball. A couple words said afterwards, and a technical foul has been called on Wally Parks. Well, Savior's clapping it up right there. He's saying, hey, I didn't do anything wrong in this situation, and Wally Parks would be the one to pick up the technical foul. I knew someone was going to pick up one, though. That's a little too much after the whistle is blown from both Savior and Parks. Savior Akiwavu kind of baited Parks in there maybe to pick up the tee. These are the things that can be momentum changers for teams. Technical fouls will either fuel you or defeat you. And in this case, we'll see how the Wildcats respond to this technical foul call because the Bisons will get these free throws and the ball back. Cole, five points now in the first half. He's got one more coming, shooting 85% from the free throw line. And you're right, it's a chance for not just Cole to get a couple free throws, but for the players for Bison to talk with Coach Nickel Berry, maybe devise... Uh, inbounds play, play here out of a quasi timeout and see what happens I don't mind a little gritty play though you know I like to see that fight and stuff like that sometimes unfortunately though it's going to end up in someone getting a technical foul if not that double tech ball deflected away Cole gets it back steps through and scores so RJ Cole picks up the field goal and the lead is trimmed to five Big possession there for the Bison. Nice pressure down low to the cutting Smith, and a foul is called as Zion Cousins went for the block. That was great help side defense by Savior on that time. RJ Cole just happens to be on the other end of it, picking up that foul. And Cole is called for the foul. That is his second, too, so a big whistle there with 29 seconds left. Smith has one more coming. Just a 50% free throw shooter. Extremely athletic. They say he's got a 45-inch vertical. Gosh, he can jump over my head about <laughs> twice. <laughs> I'm only standing at 5'6". Yeah, he, he can definitely jump over me two times. Smith gets the second one. A timeout. Coach Nickelberry is coming out for an explanation. It was actually Akuwavu who was underneath, and I think Coach Nickelberry is saying it was actually Akuwavu who committed the foul and not R.J. Cole trying to keep his star player from picking up that second one. 36 to 30. The Bison did trail by nine. They've got it down to six with 29.3 seconds left in this first half. Very slow start for both teams. Both squads were struggling. They picked up the pace. They picked up the shooting since in a pace that we more expected. This is the pace that we did expect in this game. Now that Howard is being a little smarter with the basketball, you'll be curious what they'll do on this possession. They can hold for one shot. I think the best idea is to either get the ball in Cole's hand and let him go to work or pound it down low to Savior, see if you can get an easy layup going into the half. Bethune Cookman shooting 41% right around their season average of 42. Howard just 24% so far. As the shot clock's turned off and Cole's going to hold for a final shot against this extended 2-3 defense. You can imagine that they're going to get some type of three-pointer. I believe Howard's about to run a horn set. Yep, double ball screen. Ball to the corner. I don't think he realizes that he needs to shoot it. And they're not going to get a shot up as that is how the first half ends. Good defense from Bethune-Cookman. And they lead by two possessions, 36 to 30 at the break. We'll take one with them and come back and recap the first half. It's Miak Basketball on Flow Sports. Experience. Welcome back to Burge Amazing. Ryan Pierce, Akira Carter. Next home game for the Bison is in two days on Monday, January 14th at 7.30. The Bison take on Morgan State. You can catch that game right here on Flow Sports, but come on out. Tickets still on sale. We love to see you here. 36 to 30. 
the Bison Trail, Bethune-Cookman by six at the break. Taikira, your thoughts on that first half? Thoughts on the first half? Howard didn't control the pace of the game towards the end of the second half. Um, they controlled the boards, though, at least, and that was the emphasis that we put on the game. Who would rebound the most? Howard leads with the offensive rebounds of 14. Bethune-Cookman, six offensive rebounds. They're winning that rebounding battle, 29 to seven. Another glaring thing is Howard is two for 10 from three, while Bethune-Cookman is six for 13 from long distance. So you wanna see Howard rattle some home to try to make the score even. Despite all of that, they're only down six points. Yeah, and Howard's done what we were hoping they would do. They've done well on the on the glass. They've actually out-rebounded Bethune-Cookman 29 to 27, 14 offensive rebounds like you said. The big glaring number is that field goal percentage. If you're gonna to try to beat a team that's favored to win the conference, you're gonna to have to shoot the ball well. And they've shot 24 percent from the field, 11 for 45. But the good news is, we saw something similar happen in the first half against Maryland Eastern Shore, then Howard caught fire in the second half of that game. So hopefully we'll see the same thing happen here at Virgin Mason. Yeah, we're in for definitely some runs. Um, the sport has been tied three times and then we've had four lead changes throughout this game. So I definitely think the Bison will be able to get back on top at the pace that this game is going. Both teams are asserting themselves, trying to score quickly. Bison trying to go to two and one in conference play. Bethune Cookman trying to navigate the stormy waters of five road games in a row, including three in conference. It's their fourth road game in that five game road stretch. Right now they lead Howard by a 36 to 30 break. We'll take a break and come back and further look at the stats from that first half. This is Miak basketball on Flow Sports. Howard Basketball on Flow Sports. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you taking some time on your Saturday afternoon or evening, depending on where you're at. You're on this Saturday in near mid-January. The month is flying by. Bison Trail, Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats, by a 36-30 to score. Howard down by six despite shooting 24% in that first half. If you're Coach Nickel Bear, you have to like the defensive effort. Howard's been great on the glass. They've played pretty solid defense. They just need a few shots to fall. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, individual stats for, for Howard. RJ Cole has eight points and three rebounds. Zion Cousins, two points and eight rebounds. Almost flipping that number. Two points and eight rebounds for Akawuve. Savior Akawuve had a great start with five offensive rebounds. Between Akawuve and Cousins, 11 offensive rebounds between the two. Four points for C.J. Williams on two for seven shooting. Still looking for his first three. Chad Lott has five points. Andre Torre coming off an injury. Has four points on an alley-oop as well. That was good to see. Kyle Foster has played some good minutes. Three points for Jalen Jones and two for Cameron Lewis. I think you were going to make a, a, a point there, Tykira, about Howard. They played aggressively, what you want to see. Just need a few shots to start falling. Yeah, you have some of your key players who haven't even made a three yet. Like you said, Williams is 0 for 3 from behind the three-point land. But overall, a pretty balanced attack. Everybody who has been in the game has scored except for one person, which is Kyle Foster. So that's going to be their game plan, I believe. Howard has those strength in numbers from the people who start to those coming off the bench. And neither team probably dancing in the locker room like we're seeing here at Bird Gymnasium. Not the best and prettiest offensive half from either squad. Looking at the numbers from Bethune Cookman. They picked it up towards the end there. 12 points from Mark Gordon. 3 for 3 from downtown. He was 4 for 5. They did a great job finding Gordon, number 15, the hot hand, and getting him some good open looks. Yeah, he's, been, he's had a stellar game so far. 3 for 3 from long distance. Only one for three from the free throw line from Gordon, but he leads all scorers with his 12 points. And to mention the free throw line, Bethune Cookman is only shooting 50%, four from eight from the stripe, while Howard is 85%. So I, I think a good game plan would be continue to attack so they can get fouled and shoot some free throws since they do that pretty and maybe well. Get, and maybe get players like Chantres Davis in foul trouble 
He's got seven points in that first half preseason. All Miak, Latrell, Pope had six and seven rebounds. We talked a lot about him and his play this year. The only player in the conference averaging a double-double. Looking good so far. And Howard will have to be careful. We have RJ Cole with two fouls. Akuawu, he has two. Chad Lott has two. And Lewis has two fouls. So they'll have to be aggressive but smart not to reach in and get little ticky-tack fouls. We'll take a break and come back. We'll look towards the second half and give our keys. It's MEAC basketball on Flow Sports. Coming out to Alumni Day when North Carolina, the Aggies, visit Virgin Nasium. North Carolina a and The Aggies come to town on February 16th at 4 in Virgin Nasium. It's Alumni Day. We love to see all those former Bison, Bison for Life, come on out to Virgin Nasium and root on their men's and women's teams. 36 to 30. The Bethune Cookman Wildcats lead the Howard Bison by six at halftime. Howard played good, aggressive basketball in that first half. Still down by six. What are some keys for you, Tykira, if Howard wants to come out with this win in the second half? Continue to win the battle of the board. They have 14 offensive rebounds, but it's time to convert on those. You get the offensive rebounds, try to get some layups, and ultimately go to the free throw line. And then another key to win for Howard, control the pace of this basketball game. At times, Bethune-Cookman would speed them up and get them out of their element. If they can control the place, play at the type of pace that they want to play, yeah, I think they'll be in pretty good shape coming to end of this basketball game. I always find this point of the season kind of challenging because really you're in a very valuable part of the year. Beginning of conference play, you're trying to get off to a good start for Howard. They're trying to go to two and one. The uh, Wildcats trying to get their first win with a tough conference schedule to start. But you're also in the middle of your season, kind of those dog days of winter. It's snowing outside here in D.C. It's cold. So in one hand, I think there's this initial tendency to want to relax and try to coast yourself towards the end of the year. But on the second hand, you've got to play well to start off your conference season. You as a former player, you feel that there's some validity to that, and then how do you kind of balance those two emotions? Yeah, winter break is definitely hard because <laughs> you're, for most – you're sitting in your dorm probably all day waiting till practice. There's nothing to do. You might get up once and eat, even though you know you're supposed to be eating your meals three times a day. You can get into this sluggish mindset, and then all of a sudden you have basketball practice or you have a game, and it's time to turn it on. And it's easy for student athletes to fall into that mindset. I know winter break, I'm like, shoot, everybody else is at home getting their rest. I just kind of want to chill too. But, you know, it's conference time, and you have to be able to – separate yourself and I guess that's what makes student athletes so special you're here for a job you're under a scholarship and unfortunately sometimes you, you got to do things that you don't necessarily want to do and a game isn't always what you want to do but you got to get it done Bison trailing by six let's go ahead and look at the other teams playing today Norfolk State is on the road at Coppin State North Carolina Central at Maryland Eastern Shore South Carolina State at Morgan State North Carolina A&T is at Delaware State and Savannah State is at Florida A&M. We'll try to get some scores for you as the second half goes along. Right now the score here at Bird Gymnasium, the Bison. They trail the Wildcats 36-30 to on the second half when we come back on Flow Sports. I think there are, are points in the year that are maybe underrated. When you look back at your schedule and think, wow, if we would have just done this, our year would have been different. This might be that point for Howard, or at least one of them. You're one and one. You're at home against a really good team. If you can come out and have a really strong second half and get the victory, to go two and one would be such a massive bonus for them. It would be massive, and it would be a Achilles heel in the season for Bethune-Cookman because they would then go 0-2, and, and this is the team who's projected to finish first. So it would be a very big win for Howard at this point in their season to be able to pull out this victory. They're going to have to jump on them on the defensive end, though. It can't be any type of drop-off when it comes to battling on the glass. And like I said, when that technical foul was picked up in the game, I think Bethune-Cookman turned themselves up even more. Yeah. A technical foul that led to a free throw, a couple free throws from R.J. Cole. 
It's a two possession game at halftime. Still well in striking reach for Howard down 36 to 30 as we get set for the second half. And you brought up some of these keys. If you're the Bison, you want to keep rebounding the basketball. He's done a great job at that so far. And then they're just going to get some uh, shots to fall. They shot 24% in that first half. Only made 11 field goals. They took uh, about 13 more shots than the Wildcats did, in part because of their offensive rebounding. But you just need some shots to start to go. Yeah, they're definitely putting the shots up. Two for ten from three, though. That's that's not mm -hmm. a winning team's average. You can't shoot 20% from long distance and expect to win a basketball game. And if the three's not working, you can't love it that much. Live and die by it. You go to something else. And they're 11 for 45 from the field, like you said, at 24%. Want to see them get around that 40% range, creep around 39% field goal percentage to feel good in this basketball game. That's how we get hyped up for this second half. Brian Pierce, like here at Carter. Thanks for tuning in to NAC Basketball and Flow Sports. We appreciate your time this afternoon. This early MEAC game between the Howard Bison. They're projected to finish fourth in the conference this year. They're one and one, 0 and one at home here in conference play against Bethune Cookman. They're in the middle of a five game road trip. This is game number four, three straight on the road to start the conference season. Plus they're working in some new players, well, players that have been out for a while. I guess I should say Sufi uh, Daikati has got some good minutes. He was injured the past four games. Then John Trez Davis still getting in the flow of things. The pre season all MEAC player uh, coming off the bench with seven points. You just feel like Bethune Cookman with this talent on their team, even without Isaiah Bailey, all pieces and MEAC player, who went out with an injury in, in game three. Once they get going, they're going to be tough to beat, so you'll want to get them now here at home if you're Howard. Well, they've been pretty shorthanded thus far this season, haven't had the bodies that they want, but you have Davis, your preseason all MEAC selection back in Diakati, another preseason first team selection he's back on the floor so you have to mesh in jail and start to get that chemistry going and I believe Bethune Cookman will do so it'll be Bethune Cookman to start the second half after leading by a 36 to 30 score at halftime Ryan Pierce Akira Carter thanks again for tuning in on flow sports as Smith will have the ball to start off. This Glottrell Pope at the top of the key. Now Duffus, hard dribble against Cole. Bison come out in a man-to-man -man defense. Pope working on Akuwavu. Pass to the outside in an early turnover. That's the way to start the first, I'm sorry, the first possession of the second half if you're Howard with the turnover. Now hopefully they can convert on the other end of the floor and get a score right here. RJ Cole with it, looking down low, and now will settle for Chad Lott on the outside. Halfway through the shot clock, the pull up from Williams, got it. Such a smooth jump shot, Charles Williams with the bucket. CJ the early field goal, he's got six. Team second leading score. On the other end, Dakiti gets to the rim, can't finish. Sufi Diakiti playing his first game in about three weeks. From the right wing, this three is missed by Williams. He thought it was down, it popped out. Can you see how well Cole and Williams know each other? He knew that Williams was going to be right there for that kickback three point shot. Gordon had an open look. He drilled three threes in the first half. Bison catch a break there. On the other end, it's Cole trying to get going. A quick shot. Rebound pulled in by the conference leader, Pope. Now Duffus to the right side. Daikiti. Four point lead for Bethune Cookman. Duffus. Most veteran player on this team. Daikiti into the paint, gets the defender in the air and lost it. It was taken away by Cousins. Now Cole. The 2-3 zone has given the Bison problems today. The pass goes down low. A bit too tall for the 6'9 Akuavu. 
freshman wasn't quite ready for that type of pass right there. But even in that situation, I'm curious as to what Xavier would have done with the ball if he would have caught it right there. It just looked like a lose-lose situation either way. Yeah, right now the Wildcats really just daring the Bison to shoot from the outside. They recognize their shot's not falling, and they're going to wait till they make a few probably before they switch out of that 2-3. I don't blame Bethune-Cookman. If it's working for you, you keep at it. Cole and Williams shot over 50% from the outside. It's Maryland Eastern Shore. They've both been quiet so far today as a foul is called down low. It's on Zion Cousins. Zion Cousins. And a couple free throws coming up here for Bethune-Cookman. As Latrell Pope goes to the foul line. Leads the MIAC in rebounds, leads the nation in offensive rebounds at 4.2. Three-time defensive player of the week in the MIAC. Just firing on that first free throw. That's really the one Achilles heel for this Bethune-Cookman team. They have one of the worst free throw percentages, not just in the MIAC, but the entire country. They're at 342nd. Yeah, that's not very good. And Clotrell Pope himself, he shoots 54% from the stripe, although he got the second one to fall right there. In order to win some big games down the stretch, they'll have to improve on their free throw shooting. A lot of games in the meat of the season come down to who's going to outshoot one another from the free throw line. Trying to outshoot the opponents is Chad Lott as he rims one in. Makes it a three-point game. The Bison come out on a 4-1 run to start the half. Duffus to the corner. Daikani. Now at the top, it's Duffus. Crossing over, drawing contact. Already two fouls on Howard. As soon as you put two hands on the person with the ball, it's automatically going to be a foul. The referees in the NCAA try to emphasize keeping your hands off of the ball handler and protecting the ball handler. Shot from the corner is good. That's a long two put in by... Mark Gordon, the leading scorer for Bethune-Cookman. He now has 14. Lead back to five. Cole has been wrapped up by Dondre Duffus most of the game. And Bethune-Cookman appears to be now in a man-to-man -man defense. Off the pick, shot is long, missed by Lott. Rebound pulled down by Akuavu. And a foul is called. Xavier was looking for some help right there on that one. He did a great job of getting the offensive rebound. Then he needs some of his teammates to step to the ball. He had nowhere to go after the rebound was secured. Xavier Akuwavu, six offensive rebounds, 15 offensive rebounds for Howard today. As Andre Torre will check in. As the officials discuss the last call, 39-34, 16-23 left to go. The Bison 1-1 one one in MIAC play. The Wildcats are 0-1. The Bison still going for that first MIAC home win, and that's kind of the saying. If you want to win your conference, you got to take care of business for the Bison at Bird Gymnasium. Yeah, the home floor is the place that you get it done. My coach used to have a rule, and although we didn't always adhere to this rule, <laughs> you want to set that standard. You don't lose on your home floor. You have to have pride in it and do everything to protect it when you're playing at home. So hopefully they can get this home win, their first of the MIAC Conference. One of the tougher challenges they're going to play this year at home, Bethune Cookman projected to, to win the conference. It's a very good team despite some of their injuries. They're lengthy, they're physical, and they got shooters, as we've seen today. A very balanced squad outside of the free throw shooting. This is a team that is built to, to win the conference, and Howard's up against a tough challenge today. Yeah, they have a balanced attack, Bethune-Cookman does. And as soon as their sharp shooters and all their players get back at full strength, I think they'll be a hard team to reckon with. Um, on that last play, it seemed like the referees were looking to see what the shot clock should have been at. Went from three seconds to 27. Now it's ticked down to 21. Cole off the pick and a moving screen is called on Cameron Lewis. Disagrees with the official. That's a tough one. Howard's trying to get into the flow of the game in the second half and then you're picking up little fouls like that. It's 
Make sure you're set so the ball handler can come off the screen. Let R.J. Cole go to work. That's a third on Lewis. You want to keep your bigs out of foul trouble against the tough post play of the Wildcats. Nice step back three. Pretty move from Mark Gordon. He's on today. That's 17. Mark Gordon is having him quite the ball game. Yeah, 17 already. The Bison better shut him down before he has himself a career night. Torrey with it. Now on the right side, Bison can use an answer here. Foster. A five-point run for the Wildcats. Deep three, Foster. Weak side rebound, Daikiri. This zone defense by Bethune-Cookman is really bothering the Bison. Stolen on the other end, then blocked a couple times, tossed up over the bank board. Waiting to see who, who touched it last. They're going to say it was last off of the Wildcats. Wasn't sure if it would have been tipped or not. Official says no. Last touch by Bethune-Cookman. 42-34, 15-29 left to go in this second half. We have a media timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching MEAC Basketball on Flow Sports. D.C. style, D-City Smokehouse, strives to serve the best barbecue in town. Looking at the upcoming schedule for Howard, they have a home matchup against Morgan State on Monday, tip at 7.30. Then they welcome in Harvard on Monday, January 21st. They play on the road in their conference schedule that weekend, and then at home against Delaware State on the 26th, and then they host Maryland Eastern Shore, a team they just beat pretty handily on January 28th. Trying to take care of business here, down 42 to 34, 15, 29 left to go in the second half. Bison are one and one on conference play. Still early on, these games so important, though you want to take care of business at home as RJ Cole brings it across the timeline. The bench for Bethune Cookman chance defense. Now Chad Lott back out to Cole. A quiet day for him. He's at eight points. He'll have a shot for more here. Foul beyond the three-point line. And not happy about that with Sean Trez Davis. Well, Cole will have a chance to get in double figures and scoring on these three free throws and that's a good way to bait the defender into foul you from from long range rj cole shooting it's a bit under 80 percent from the foul line that's something howard does well they are six for seven in the game and cole's got three coming here R.J. Cole, the leading scorer in the conference, leads in assists. The MIAC, preseason player of the year. A bit off today. Eight points, four rebounds, two for eight from the field. Now four for six from the free throw line. One more coming for Cole. His team down by seven. You want to keep it in striking range as you approach the latter part of the second half. For sure, free throws will be... A starting point in doing so after these free throws power needs to get a stop they can't play back and forth basketball and you see they're going to go to their full court press trying to get those stops Duffus who's handled the ball for the most part today and has done well with it against Cole it's team up by six looking for their first conference win pass to the corner Gordon's been great 17 points Ball down low to Davis. Nice feed to Pope. He couldn't handle. It finds its way back to Davis. Players hit the hardwood. And a foul is called. It's going to go against Howard. That's on Akuavu. That's a nice save right there by Cole. But most of the time, you're not supposed to save the ball underneath the other team's basket because that can lead to an easy scoring opportunity. So he got lucky that they didn't score. But unfortunately, they did pick up the foul right there. Savior Akuavu, the foul, he uh, goes by his first name. Ohana Gule is his last. His teammates just call him Savior. Keep it simple. Offensive foul underneath. As Akuavu, Savior, whatever you want to call him, played great defense on that play. 
Davis has his third foul. If I'm Howard, I'm trying to go at them, even though they're playing this dis dis disruptive zone. Looks like they're going back to their man now, so Howard has some room to work. Andre Toure is checked back in. Cole hangs in the corner. Lot with it. Team's third leading scorer. Works away from the pick. Dumps down low. Toure bobbled it out of bounds. Had some space if he could have pulled that in. Yeah, I don't think Toro was quite ready for that pass right there on the baseline. Coach Nickelberry says Toure is the most improved player from the beginning of the year to right now on this team. The freshman from Paris, France. Didn't practice much of this week with an injury. Gordon, the kick out. Up and under, move from Duffus as he gets on the board with a bucket. It's a nice strong attack to know that he needed to finish on the other side. Cousins, Bison could use a bucket here. Fake from Lott, nice move. Got it to go. Chad Lott the score as he jumped up against the trees for the bucket. Williams isn't showing up at the moment. R.J. Cole's having a, a pretty quiet game from his standard, although he has 10 points. Chad Lott is doing his job, the red shirt junior, by stepping up on that last possession. Kick to the corner. Inside shot is blocked by Toure. Picked back up by Davis. So kick out with nine to shoot. Deep three is good. Nothing but nylon for Mark Gordon. He's feeling it. Hops to the defensive side of the floor. 20 points. Williams tries to respond. And done. That might be what Howard tries to do. A quick pass up the floor to get somebody involved. Yep, and that's what Williams does. Co-player of the week in November 19th. He's pre he was on MIAC first team last season. Let's get him going a bit. And he shoots 35% from deep. Alley-oop over the top and out of bounds. They'll go to the Bison. So here we go. Bison get the three. Got a little momentum here. This might be the time to try to make a push at this lead for Bethune Cookman. RJ Cool has some space. Little stutter with the right hand. Nice find down low to Toure. Layups off. Rebound pulled down by Davis. Three on two. He bobbles the Pope, who regains and scores. That's a nice feed right there from R.J. Cole to create. He's a bit upset at his teammate for not finishing that one, but despite that, you have to get back on defense. And because they didn't, Clotrell Pope had the easy two through those defenders. So although you missed the basket and you're a little upset at your teammate, you have to get back on the defensive end and try to get the stop no matter what. Pope has nine points now, eight rebounds, averaging a double-double, 11-11. Toure goes up, the shot is blocked. Torrey thought he was fouled. alley -oop, other end. Pope brings it down, then stuffs it through. Four quick points for Cottrell Pope. And the Wildcats have their biggest lead so far today at 10. Well, Kevin Nickelberry is letting his team play on. Thought he would call a timeout right there. Maybe they have the media coming up, so that's why he did it. We have the media timeout. Like Akira said, 51-41. to 41. The Wildcats starting to pull away from the Bison. You're watching MIAC basketball on Flow Sports. The new celebration. For, if you're Coach Grace, Tykira, and you're talking to your team right now, what are some adjustments, if you're, or if you're uh, Coach Nickelberry rather, what are some adjustments that your team has to make? The team has to just settle in no matter what Bethune-Cookman throws at them. Bethune-Cookman is throwing a zone, then going back to man, and I think that's really disrupted the Bison on the offensive end because they don't know what they're going to see. But regardless, I think they just need to calm down a bit. They're, e they're missing those easy bunnies, and it just seems like their game is a little sped up. Coach Grace and the women's basketball team beat Bethune-Cookman earlier today. They were projected to finish second in the MIAC. And then the men's team here today is projected to win it as the Howard men's team is trying to go for that upset and complete the sweep against two really good Bethune-Cookman basketball teams. Inbounds pass goes deep and chasing it down. It's Akuovu. And a foul in the backcourt, a quick one. That is the fourth 
on Bethune Cookman. Cole is just a smart player. You saw him. He kind of initiated that contact and red fed into it a little bit. Just a smart play by the point guard, RJ Cole. Leon Red now has four fouls. That's Lot, top of the key, Cousins. Sophomore had a nice game. 16 to work with, Williams off the pick. Goes back to his right hand, to the rim, and a foul is called on Pope. Nice job by Williams, creating that space from going left to right and getting to the rim. It's a great job by Williams, but Thune Cookman is trying to corral the Bison to one side of the floor. You see they're trying to force them baseline, so it was good that Williams was able to break them up by doing a little shake and bacon, having the attack middle. CJ Williams, 16 points, five rebounds earlier this week as it's approaching double figures here with nine. That free throw gives him 10. Williams preseason on the act first team, set out practice earlier this week. As he gets the second, third of the conference in scoring. Now has 11 points. His team trails so 51 to 43, the physicality up with Cookman. While it's played a big role, it's been some of their finesse play. The outside shooting of Gordon has really buoyed this team today. And that pass is down low, going up for the alley oop was the post player Davis. I don't think they realize it's only four seconds left on the clock now. Now three, Duffus, the runner, no, rebound, tap, Davis, put back, it's gonna go. It was tapped around and finally put through by Chantrez Davis. Those second chance opportunities are what is killing the Bison right now. You do such a great job to make them take a shot with two seconds left, then you don't secure the rebound. What a move by Cole to get to the free throw line as he earns another two. Outside shot not falling for RJ Cole today, being the smart player, earning a trip to the foul line. But that's their strength with whom Cookman leads the conference in rebounding. Very physical, tough team to play, and we're seeing that here in the second half. And I think that R.J. Cole knows that his shot is not necessarily falling from the outside, which is why he's trying to get to the stripe where the Bison are 83% today. So I don't think that's a bad idea. Shoot more free throws. Stop the clock. Give, your give yourself a chance to get back into this basketball game. Yeah, you make a good point. That's six fouls now on Bethune-Cookman. So free throws could play a, a role with 10.45 left to go. Cole sinks them both. He now has 12 points, nine below his season average. Here's Gordon. He's been the player of the game so far, 20 for Bethune Cookman. As he crosses over on Lot, Gordon keys one up, it's missed. Rebound touched the baseline. It'll be Bison basketball. That's the way to show his hands on that play. And those are the types of stops that you need if you want to get back into this game. You can't play trade baskets. You got to get stops and score if you're Howard. Cole off the pick. Lewis rolls. Rather, Akuwavu. Cole in trouble, and a jump ball is called. It'll stay here with Howard. Cole was looking for a foul on that one. Tykira, I think one thing that uh, Bethune-Cookman's done such a good job with, they've played a lot of zone, they've played a lot of man, but no matter where Cole is, they've extended, as you're seeing here with Duffus, the pressure on him. That's what you have to do when you have a player that's as dominant as Cole on the floor. Know where he is at all times. Clearly, they, they did their scouting report. Gordon with the stuff. The Howard bench wanted to travel. Gordon throws it down. He's got 22. Gordon is showing up and showing out today. That flush was something crazy. Mark Gordon, averaging just under 10 points per game. Local player out of South Florida, playing for Bethune-Cookman. He's got 22. Shot is good and a foul. Big throw down there by Zion Cousins, a sophomore. He's got a chance at a three-point play. Big boy there. Sophomore from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He's a local kid as well. Hopefully he can finish this one off on this at the strike. And that's big. That's on Quatrell Pope. That's number four. And Pope's going to come out. Diakiti will check back in. Sufi. 
Shot is missed. Duffus will control. 55-47. The second game in MEAC play for Bethune-Cookman. The favorites to win the conference are 0-1. The fourth of five straight on the road. They've traveled over 1,700 miles on this five-game road trip. Or at least they will have when it's finished. Bison, one and one, trying to get their first home win in MEAC play, and a foul is called. Xavier's upset on that one, but you have to know that you can't swat at everything if you're the big man. Sometimes you just have to throw your hands up, let them be straight. If you're swatting at it, you give the referee something to look for. So tough when the players got the, the ball out in their hands. It's like a easy pickings there. If you're a, a six foot nine post player, low hanging fruit, you take a swing and just like that the ball disappears and goes to the other hand and you get called for the foul. Yeah, he's the type of guy he just wants to block everything and I don't blame him. When you're high up in the air like that, it's easy to fall into that. But sometimes you have to know when you can contest those and when you just have to kind of let it go and now he's picked up his fourth foul. Akuwavu will have a seat. Andre Tori is in. Here's Cole in the front court. Showing the quick handles. Against four players he still scores. RJ Cole has really been aggressive in the second half. That time at base off. And you see why he was the fastest Bison in school history to score a thousand points, which he did on December 16th. A travel is called on Duffus. And now down by six. You can make it a one possession game with a three. Cole picking up his play. He's got 14 points. 11 for CJ Williams. Both of them are out there right now. Williams calling for it. It goes to the top to Cousins. Cole yep. is the type of player, he kind of wows you because it's a, it's a relatively quiet 14 points. You know, he's getting it done at the free throw line and also now attacking the basket. But when he does do something, it shows. Shows right there. Good extra pass to Zion Cousins. That's why he leads the conference in assists. Cousins finish. It's down to four. A little run here for the Bison. Four-point mini run. Now let's see what Bethune-Cookman comes up with. Every time the Bison make a push, the Wildcats have an answer as Parks will go to the free throw line. Once again, the hands. You don't have to jump with the player on that. Try to build a wall. Make, make him travel on that play. You don't have to jump with the offensive player. Parks, the transfer from Iowa Community College. Earned D2 first team all region there. That's one more coming. Splits a pair, lead back to five. We approach the eight minute mark, the second half after a physical, well defended, but somewhat sloppy first half. We've seen a lot more finesse and solid play here in the second. Here's Williams, he's got 11. Williams looking for a shot, called for travel. That will lead us to immediate timeout. The Wildcats from Bethune Cookman leading the Howard Bison at 56 to 51 with 7 to 50 left to go in this one. It's Neak basketball on Flow Sports. That's at 7:30. We hope to see you out there. And of course, tweet at the Bison and use the hashtag our time. It's the Bison's time now to try to make a run. Down by five, they could use a stop at a bucket. Duffus, the steady hand at point guard. Top of the key, three is missed. The rebound is pulled down by Cousins. Zion Cousins, rebound number 11. He's four points away from a double-double. A bump and a foul. This one's got to go against Gordon. Cole has to be care careful right there. They're trying to bait him to a trap. Luckily, he got that foul called. Find himself shooting two more from the free throw line. With Cole getting going, you have to think this uh, Wildcats team are going to try different strategies than they have throughout the game to throw him off. And like you said, baiting him into a trap is certainly one. And Cole's not necessarily doing it from his 
field goals. He's 0 for 3 from three-point land, but 8 from 10 from the free throw line, and he just made that last one. So now 10 for 12 on the afternoon. He's living from the foul line, lead down to three. Cole getting them both. The Bison have shot well from the free throw line. That's kept them in this one. They're 14 for 16 as a team. Going down Lois Duffus, it's stolen. That was a great job by Turo to slow it down right there. He saw that he didn't have numbers, pulled it out, got it to the right person's hand. Cole with the right hand. It might have been tipped, didn't matter, he scored. RJ Cole with 18, and the lead is one. He's got five straight. The former rookie of the year has come alive. He's just playing so poised and keeping his team in this ball game. Only down by one, the Bison are. Pass to the corner. Driving out as parts so of the travel is called. And now you wonder how long Coach Ryan Ryder will keep Latrell Pope on the bench. And we're getting our answer. Pope is back in now along with Leon Red. It's like all of a sudden we've seen that turn in the game. And Cole is just so good. He's able to do that for this Bison squad. It seemed like little by little they've been chipping away. And it's thanks to the effort of Cole and his teammates just setting him up to be in the right positions to score and get to the basket. Cole, the floater is short, and the foul is called as he went for the steal. He's not happy with that call, but he did reach in right there, and he knows he needs to be smarter than that. Sometimes when the other team has the rebound secure, you want to be aggressive, but you have to let that one go if you're the best player right now. 18 points, and now picked up your third foul. As Davis goes to the free throw line. One He's got a one and one coming up. I have to give credit to this BCU staff. They're the youngest staff in the entire country. It's a little bit over 31 years old for the average. They've really built a good program. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Ryan Ryder and team. He's in the second year. As a turnaround shot is missed. Rebound tapped. Out of bounds. It'll stay here with the Wildcats. The fans are not happy about that. They thought that that should have been an offensive foul. Thought Cousins was in the right position to get that call. Bison have trailed by double figures. They led early on in the game. Now down by one point, trying to get their first MIAC home one of the year. They're one and one. Bethune Cookman looking for their first MIAC one of the year. They're 0 and one, preseason favorites. A big early MIAC game between these two teams on Flow Hoops. We're glad you've been able to join us. Some fancy dribbling. The shot is no good. Rebound pulled down by Cousins. And now Cole and company can take the lead. Cole kicks out. Shot from Torre. And now Duffus on the other end. He tries to drive and now pulls back. Seemed like a switch turned on for the Bisons in this second half of a certain defensive focus. Guys are talking out there, getting back on defense, not getting down about missed shots. Ball down low to Davis. The kick out. Open look. Red It's big if it goes. Pope the tip. That drops. Clentrell Pope. Another bucket for him. He's got a double-double. He averages 11.6 rebounds per game. So, you know, that's the person that you want to keep off of the boards. Yeah, Clentrell Pope. Now at 13 points and 12 rebounds. The only player in the MIAC to average a double-double. Now let's see how the Bison respond. Underneath, Williams a little bit short. May have been tipped. Here come the Wildcats. On the other end, it's Red. Stocks from 15. Got it. Leon Red, the big score. Four straight points, and the visitors are on top by five. And that draws a timeout by Coach Nickelberry. 60 to 55. We'll go ahead and, and keep it right here to remind you the dance starts here. The 2019 MIAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament returns to Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia, March 11th to the 16th. That's just two months away, and tickets are now on sale. Pick up your tickets at member institutions, ticket offices, Ticketmaster, or by calling the MIAC office at 757-951-2055. Ryan Pierce, Takira Carter, Takira, this feels like a late turning point for both these teams. It can be a point that gets away from Howard or they can 
kind of step in here and maybe get a bucket and get it back to a one possession game. I think so. Howard's been playing well. They can't be frazzled by the run that Bethune Cookman has gone on. It's been that, and it's still plenty of time left in this game for Howard to cut into this five point lead. So if you're Howard, you're not feeling bad or like you're in a bad place. As long as they continue to attack the basket at will, they'll be in a good place. They also have to realize that they'll have to get stopped. Put yourself in that timeout right now, Coach Nickelberry talking to his team. What are you saying to your players right now? I'm telling them right now they have to get on the board. Bethune-Cookman is getting second chance opportunities at this point in the game. And then on those missed shots you have um, Patrell Polk that came down and hit that yeah. pull-up jumper. So it's just little things like that. It's not that Bethune-Cookman is doing anything that is significantly like, wow. It's the fact that they're making plays at this point and now Howard has to make a play and score on this end and then get a, st get a stop. Howard breaks huddle. Down by five. R.J. Cole has come alive in the second half. He's got 18 points in the game. C.J. Williams has 11. They're two leading scores. Torre, Cousins, and Jones out there for the Bison. Reed, Pope, Davis, Gordon, Duffus. The five on the floor for Bethune-Cookman. Gordon's got 22. Here's a three from the right side. Drilled by Chad Lott. Well, you love that shot if he makes it. You hate it if you missed it, and luckily <laughs> Chad Lott was able to knock that one down. 42% three-point shooter and Lott. Lott has a tendency to hit buckets when Howard needs a score, and he does there. The lead is back to two. Now the Wildcats tend to shoot, trying to respond. Duffus working on Cole, sizes him up, kicks the wing, and that's a turnover as Red's left heel was on the sideline. That's a starting point. Howard can take the lead right here if, they're, if they can manage to get a score. Hey, somebody go get the ball. Nobody's back there to help out R.J. Cole, and now it's picked up by Chad Lott. Just hit that big three. Let's see what he's got in score for us here. His team down by two. Cole, double team. Now Cousins. As he went to look for Lott, and it's stolen. He has to know he had three defenders swarming around him at that point. Reverse the basketball. You don't want to ever pass to the the death place, the, the corner. That is where people go to die. They call it the coffin corner. <laughs> a, a fitting name, especially on that possession. As the Wildcats try to capitalize a kickball. 3.30 left, that leads to immediate timeout. 60 to 58, we have the conclusion of this one. MEAC basketball on Flow Sports. Then a good one, Howard down by two, 60 to 58 against the Wildcats, between Cookman, Ryan Pierce, Akira Carter, 3.30 left to go. And now we've gone down to crunch time. Howard's stuck in this game. They got down by double figures a couple different times. They battled back. The key was stay in it till the end and give your chance, give yourself a chance to win. And they've done that. Now Howard's gonna try to pull it off. They have to. If I'm Howard right now, I'm in attack mode. Both teams are in the bonus at this point in the game. And two more fouls, Howard will be in the double bonus shooting two automatically. So I would definitely go at Bethune-Cookman. That has been their bread and butter thus far in this game, so why go away from it? But most importantly, they're going to need to stop on this end of the floor. Bethune-Cookman, Leon Red will inbound. Off the pick, it's to Gordon. Good closeout defense from Williams. Gordon gets in the middle. Short on the shot. Offensive rebound deflected away by... Uh, Akuwavu, and it's taken away by the Bison. Nice job by Savior with being the Savior. He didn't foul on that play. Savior saving the day. On the other end, the shot is missed by Lott. The rebound by Savior Akuwavu, and he earns the trip to the free throw line. A couple big plays by the freshman from Nigeria, Savior Akuwavu. The big deflection defensively, and now a chance to tie this one if he can sink a pair of free throws. I think he got sick and tired of sitting on the bench from his foul trouble and was like, I'm going to come into this game with these last three minutes and make myself known. 
He is playing with four fouls. Leon Red and Sean Trent Davis, along with Platrell Pope. So three key players for Bethune Cookman also playing with four fouls. And now that's number five on Pope. So Pope is out. So you're waiting to see who that foul was called on. So Platrell Pope is gone. Akuavu misses the first free throw. Shooting 84% from there this year. He's got one more coming. Two points, nine rebounds for the six foot nine post player. Got three points. Lead is one. Latrell Pope is out. Red and Davis playing with four fouls apiece. Four on Akuavu. Three minutes left. Bethum Cookman up by one. Off the pick. Duffus. Feed to the baseline. Good ball movement. Davis bobble it stolen by Cole. Pass up the floor to Williams. Williams has it poked away and it'll stay here with Howard. It looked like Akuavu was trailing. He was hoping for a pass. Akuavu, he was talking on that whole last possession on defense and that's why Cole was able to get through so smoothly on defense. When the big man talks to the guard, good things happen. Here's Cole with 26 to work with. Cole looking for a shot, in trouble, picked up his dribble. And now Lott. Lott hit a big three earlier. Pulls up from 12 and got it. Howard's on top by one. Lott a couple of huge baskets in the second half. Great patience and poise by Lott right there. Got his defender in the air and was easy to get that easy two. Forces Bethune Cookman to call the timeout. Timeout taken by Coach Ryder. Wildcats now trail by one, 61 to 60. Howard on top by one, 226 left to go. And now with Latrell Pope out, you have to think if you're Howard and they tried to do it there on the offensive end, you're looking to attack. With Pope out, the Bison now will likely be in attack mode on the offensive side. Yeah, no, be able to attack the basket. Main thing, I would get the ball in RJ Cole's hand. He's been the most consistent when getting to the basket. 10 for 12 from the stripe. They'll be in the double bonus on the next one, so it's going to be an automatic two free throws. I would be in attack mode if I were the Bison. Bethune Cookman has had a great afternoon from their wing player, Mark Gordon. He's 8 for 12 from the field. He's inbounding the basketball. Watch for him to inbound this and potentially try to get a shot right away. Something to keep in mind if you're the Bison. The ball goes out to the right side. Into the hands of Duffus. 2.20 left in the game. 20 on the shot clock. Duffus baits the defender. Gets down low. Shot is blocked. Turned away by Zion Cousins. Akuavu was down there too. On the other end, Cool Got in trouble midair and threw it away. Taken by Duffus. Now on the other end, Duffus, one hand shuffle pass, bounce pass down low, the stuff thrown in by Parks. Well, Cole trotted back on that play after he threw the ball away, and that results in a Bethune Cookman's two on the other end of the floor. If you're him, you gotta get back. Who cares if you threw it away? A potential four point swing here late, under two left to play. Cole picks up the triple. Now Parks, five massive points in this quarter. Can he make it seven? Over the double team. It's short. Rebound lost. They're going to say it's last touch by Howard. Tough to tell there, though. Williams, it looked like he reached over his back from this angle here. So luckily a foul call wasn't picked up, and it's just going to be Bethune-Cookman's ball. Now they have to really, really focus and lock in on this defensive possession, try to get a stop. Duffus met by Cole. Duffus. Now to Gordon, 22 this game for him. The bounce pass, Parks scores. He's got four straight, lead is three for the visiting Wildcats. Now the Bison need a score. Cole double team, team down by three. Big shot from Williams off the back rim. Akuavu, the savior, saves that possession. Cole the three, that's short. Rebound tap again, Akuavo. He goes up, missed it. Rebound tapped again, and it's pulled down by Leon Red. I, I thought Akuavo got fouled right there on that put back, but it seemed as though the refs didn't think that. Red has it in the front court. 16 to shoot. 30 seconds left in the second half. Red the kick out. Parks, four straight points, make it seven. Wally Parks, seven points. 
in a row. And his team is up 67 to 61. Timeout taken by the Bison. It's a tough finish here for Howard to keep it here. The Bison were up 61 to 60. Wally Parse got two putbacks and now the open right corner three. Well, if you're a freshman, you know that you don't help off a ball side shooter. You stunt to recover or you either just stay home on that one. And you should know that he scored four straight buckets. And then you're going to help off on him, let, let him feel good and get the open three. So Savior should have just stayed home on that last possession. It could have prevented that three-point shot. And we're at that point in the game now for Howard. You're down by two possessions. We still have 24 seconds, there still is time, and we pointed out earlier if Bethune-Cookman, a very complete team, has a weakness in its free throw shooting. If you're the Bison, are you thinking quick three, maybe with Cole or Williams, possibly Lott, or are you trying to go to the basket and get a, a quick two? I think Cole should go to the basket and get a quick two, potentially an and one. You don't have to settle for the three quite yet. And then if you don't score at that point, I would foul. R.J. Cole, 4 for 11 from the field. He's 10 for 12 from the free throw line. He's yet to hit a three. Howard has struggled from downtown. They're 4 for 16 from deep. If there's been a hot hand, it's been Chad Lott. He's 2 for 3 from the outside. They break with Lott, Williams, Akuwazu, Cousins, and Cole. The Bison will have to work the length of the floor. Still a lot of time, 24 seconds. But you can't be patient. This has got to be a quick shot. Bison trying to go to 2-1 in conference play. They're 1-1 one now. Bethune-Cookman looking for their first conference win of the season as they go through this grueling start to their conference schedule. Three straight road games. Pass to Williams. He's triple team. Gets it up a little bit long. Rebound pulled down for Bethune-Cookman. I don't see how Howard didn't make that adjustment knowing that Bethune Cookman has been trying to trap them on that sideline all evening they've been trying to bait them to the corners and keep them on the side not let them have that middle attack so I don't necessarily know what coach Nickelberry drew up there but you want something going down the middle because Bethune Cookman has sure. been trapping all evening yeah coach got the ball to Williams that's where you want it as the free throw is rimmed in fittingly it's Wally Parks gets eight straight points. Make it nine. You love the effort, though, from Howard. Uh, they were down by double figures, fought back so close. They were leading 61 to 60. And the nine straight points for Bethune Cookman. Yeah, you got to cool. credit Bethune Cookman. They just seem like you see why they're right mm -hmm. to be number one or to finish number one. <laughs> And the MEAC, they turned up so quickly on Howard. It seemed like, you know, the game was within reach, and now all of a sudden they have a 69-63 lead with nine seconds left on the clock. Quick timeout, Coach Nickelberry gets his defense set up. Team down by six, 9.1 seconds left as Bethune-Cookman concedes the layup to the point guard pull. Howard can get a foul here. A couple missed free throws. It would be the... Ninth foul for the Bison, so it's still a one and one only for Bethune Cookman. But then you're going to have to work quickly on the other the offensive end. Howard's got a one day break, then they host Morgan State on Monday night. The Bison four and one in the Burr this season. Ideally, you get a steal here, though. As the inbounds pass goes to the sideline and a foul is called. Collins will go to the free throw line. This will be a tough game to drop for Howard. They haven't yet to get a conference win on their home floor. We talked about the tough schedule for the Wildcats to start the Bison. They faced two very tough teams to begin their season as well. They got the win against Maryland Eastern Shore earlier this week. They started the conference season against Florida A&M, dropped by 10, beat Maryland Eastern Shore, and then now Bethune-Cookman. Been a hard-fought game against two teams we expect to see playing for the conference at the end of the season. It's lived up to what we thought, very competitive, aggressive, physical game. There's a couple big shots made by Bethune-Cookman down the stretch. 
Bethune Cookman can credit Parks. He just had ice water in his veins in the last couple minutes of the game when it was coming down to the wire. He was like, Give me the ball, I'll fire it up. And it paid off as Parks will finish this ball game with 10 points and five rebounds. Lot rims out the shot, and that'll do it. So the Bison fight hard. They fall to one and two in conference play as Bethune Cookman gets their first MEAC win of the year. They win 71 to 63. A well balanced performance from them. They attacked down low and then they got that great outside play from Mark Gordon. His 22 points, a massive boost for this Bethune Cookman team. Yeah, Mark Gordon was 5 for 7 from three point land. Very confident in his shooting and also 8 from 12 from the field all together. Credit Mark Gordon for stepping up for Bethune Cookman. And then on the other side, RJ Cole. He had himself a game 4 for 11 field goals. 10 for 12 from the stripe. He'll finish out the game, 18 points. Bison fall today, 71 to 63. They'll be right back here in two days against Morgan State. It's the first day of classes for students on Monday, 7.30. Tip, we hope to see you here at the bird. If not, we'd love to have you watching on a flow hoop. Spakira Carter, final thoughts on this one. Howard falling, a very close game, 71-63. They fought nonetheless. The game could have gone, you know, one of two ways. When they got down really big, the deficit could have gotten worse, but they fought back. I think they had a few mental lapses in really the last two minutes of the game. Overall, nothing to hang their heads about too much. Just go back, watch some film, and it's back to the drawing boards. These two teams will meet again. Big thanks to our production staff. Did a fantastic job. Producers, camera operators, great work. Big thanks to you for tuning in. We appreciate your support watching Howard Bison basketball here on the Flow Sports. Thank you, Carter. I'm Ryan Pierce. Thank